Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. Today, a conversational roundtable with Joe Davidson of the Sacramento Bee, Darren Saavedra of the San Jose Mercury News, and Orange County Register's very own Steve Fryer. The uh, Los Rios Community College District, which has several large junior colleges here, Sacramento City College, American River College, uh, Consumers River College, has announced today that all of those campuses will be, um, you know, closed this fall. It'll be online learning only. Um, no word on what it does to those sports, but will those things become a template for high schools? Um, at this point, I can't imagine any of the high schools reopening. I'm not trying to be a doomsayer, but, the, you know, everybody's on the air, you know, erring on the side of extreme caution. I mean, they're trying to be optimistic, you know, in a best case scenario, Dwayne said that football would start on August 7th and, Pat said that football in the NCS would start on August 10th, but I mean, as each day passes, it's, I find it hard to believe that that will happen. You know, and one of the factors uh, to think about in this thing too, let's say like Joe was saying, you know, there's, there's some coach that goes maybe slightly, well, he was sort of alluding to this, is a coach goes slightly rogue and says, you know, we're going to go ahead and have practice or, do, or wait, let me, you're going to have parents they are going to say, wait a minute, you know, parents are going to make the call too in terms of whether or not, you know, they, there's, they're a feel a confident that their kids can go out and sweat with other kids. Joe Davidson, Darren Saavedra, and Steve Fryer for the hour coming up. This ought to be fun, everybody. Uh, we wanted to get a kind of a different perspective from way up on top of the state from Sacramento down to where we are here in Southern California. So we decided to do a little round table discussion for our episode this week and joining us is the, uh, the highly, I would say respected and very entertaining uh, writer from the Sacramento Bee, Joe Davidson. Darren Sabedra is a part of the uh, San Jose Mercury News, which is our sister newspaper of our, of our uh, our companies between the Southern California Newspaper Group and the Bay Area Newspaper Group. And of course, we've got the one and only Steve Fryer, the Hall of Famer from the Orange County Register. Joe, Darren, Steve, smiles, Hello. everyone's hey. looking good. Uh, I guess I win the contest for having the best background today, I've been told. You I could have gone in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Are you barbecuing back there? I, I, you know what? That's probably going to happen uh, either tomorrow or on Thursday. I guarantee you. You know. Yeah, we didn't know this was a cactus tutorial <laughs> here. You know, you got cactus. And... I'm doing. Did you guys? Did you guys just see the raccoon that walked behind James there? He's going to turn around. I did not know that. Oh. That's a problem. There, that's a problem. You know. No, they're nocturnal. It couldn't happen. It's, it's <laughs> windy. Right. It's windy and raining here. So, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's get going. Let's just start talking. I think um, the first question I think everybody has, and we'll just take it from Joe and work our way down south here, is uh, what are we hearing about fall sports, Joe? Uh, we're hearing a lot of nothing. I think everything's on hold. The, the CIF office is here in Sacramento, and uh, Ron Nocetti has been uh, tremendous in keeping us all updated. Uh, they'd love to have some news, something to report. Um, and I think with, with the you know, working with the 10 section commissioners dotted across the state, they're all waiting to see what the county health officials say, what, waiting to hear what elected government officials say, whether it's their local mayor or Governor Newsom, who has daily press conferences and parts of the state are slowly reopening. Um, a lot less population way up here in the northern part of the state, especially up to the Oregon <clears> border. And so Yuba County and Sutter counties are reopening. Does it mean school's going to start? Uh, does it mean High school athletic competition is going to start. I think we all know that spring sports have already been shelved, so we're looking ahead um, to, you know, what's going to be allowed. Summer football practices, um, even seven-on-sevens, sevens, no green light on that. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see some defiant coaches in some of these small areas in, in Northern California. They're going to just go out and, and start doing tr conditioning and weight training. Um, and you can understand why they would, because they feel like, hey, if we're cleared in Yuba County or Sutter County, why can't we do that? And then it gets to the point of a, what's, is there a competitive inequity, uh, an imbalance? And that's going to be interesting. And I think people are going to, coaches, 
seem to rat out people for decades. Um, you know, oh, somebody's hitting the blocking sled too early, or this guy's got this going on, or this going on. Well, gee, imagine if somebody's going to get ratted out for having uh, weightlifting. And so um, I think we're going to just have to wait to see. I think when June 1st rolls around, we're all going to call Ron Nachetti of the CIF office and say, hey, is there an update? Uh, and then July 1st, and that, that uh, right on down the line. And as we said off the air, um, James is the uh, Los Rios Community College District, which has several large junior colleges here, Sacramento City College, American River College, uh, Consumers River College, has announced today that all of those campuses will be, um, you know, closed this fall. It'll be online learning only. Um, no word on what it does to those sports, but will those things become a template for high schools? Um, at this point, I can't imagine any of the high schools reopening. I'm not trying to be a doomsayer, but that, you know, everybody's on the air, you know, erring on the side of extreme caution. The CSU um, system, the, the Cal State University system in California um, is about to announce that we've heard um, that um, all of its CSU campuses will be offline. So if the college is doing that, then what are the high schools gonna do? That's the big X factor. Darren, you're in a, in a situation where you're covering several sections right, from where you right. live. And, uh, uh, very interesting dynamic when I understand in your neck of the woods because the message doesn't, you know, there's, there's a section that's throwing dates out there and another section that isn't. What do you know? Well, I talked to the uh, North Coast Section Commissioner Pat Krushank and Central Coast Section Commissioner uh, Dwayne Morgan last week. We did a Q&A that ran in the paper and uh, both... I mean, they're trying to be optimistic, you know, in a best case scenario, Dwayne said that football would start on August 7th and Pat said that football in the NCS would start on August 10th. But I mean, as each day passes, it's, I find it hard to believe that that will happen. Uh, the CCS is putting contingency plans together. Well, the NCS is too, but it didn't really say which direction it was gonna go in. Uh, Dwayne Morgan said that they had discussed internally about uh, potentially moving football and water polo to the winter and uh, volleyball and uh, field hockey. Field hockey is played in the CCS and uh, I believe cross country and golf uh, to the spring. So they would match up the, the boys and girls golf, boys and girls volleyball and but I mean, what's gonna happen in the winter if you were to have football and soccer, uh, how do you share the fields? And it's gonna be getting dark at five o'clock and uh, you know, what do you do? You can't send them out to practice fields where there are no lights. Uh, you know, everybody's gonna have to practice in the stadium. Uh, so uh, they've got a, they've got a re really tough situation on their hands. Uh, they're all just, you know, monitoring what Governor Newsom's saying. And, you know, obviously, they're, I'm sure they're monitoring what the colleges are doing. And uh, Joe is right. I mean, the CSU just announced today that all 23 of its campuses are going to go to mostly online, uh, online learning in the fall, which, you know, what does that do to the, the, the CSU schools that play Division I football, you know, San Jose State, San Diego State. Uh, what happens there, what happens to Sacramento State. Um, so many questions out there and nobody has the answers to them right now. And uh, we're calling kind of all in a wait and see, but I mean, you want to remain optimistic, but it's, it's really difficult at this point. You know, Steve, this is going to be complicated, isn't it, for us in, down here in the South? Yeah. You know, and one of the factors uh, to think about in this thing too, let's say like Joe was saying, you know, there's there's some coach that goes maybe slightly, well, he was sort of alluding to this, is a coach goes slightly rogue and says, you know, we're going to go ahead and have practice or, do, or weightlifting. You're going to have parents, they're going to say, wait a minute, you know, parents are going to make the call too in terms of whether or not, you know, they there's, they're, I feel uh, confident that their kids can go out and sweat with other kids uh, safely and not, uh, not spread coronavirus. Uh, you know, it seems to be a pretty contagious item from what we've, we've heard, but we're really in the dark on all this thing, just like parents are. We don't know what's going on. Um, you know, uh, a lot of this has to do, I think as Dr. Fauci said, you know, the virus will determine what happened. Yep. And 
and if, if uh, flattening the curve and all that stuff, and we get to that, you know, days that uh, that the uh, virologists are talking about in terms of mac, you know, days consecutive days without, you know, more infections, more outbreaks, stuff like that. That's going to really determine, you know, when everybody can hit the accelerator and start thinking about what and when uh, sports are going to happen. You know, one of the things, Joe, what we find, you know, down here in the South, and I'm sure you might have it up north, is I, I talked to a private school coach. This was back in early April. And he said, we're a business. And if these businesses are opening, then we're going to be open because we need to make money. Right. There is no comeback to that, is there? You know, that's, uh, that's where we're going to be really divided. Um, I've been doing some different kind of stories outside of sports just to keep – keep the pulse going and and I'm, I'm i'm curious about small business owners so i went up to um up highway 50 good an hour east of here up near placerville and um el dorado cafe a little mom and pop restaurant and they said we're going to reopen we're going to defy the shelter in we've got to reopen we're, we're going to lose our business uh, we're getting eviction notices uh, we're, we're going to wind up homeless and I, I said, I'm going to go tell the story. The place was packed. There was a huge line out in the parking lot. Um, people were chanting USA. They thought it was a real victory, a real triumph. That's the kind of thing that's going to have started happening in high school sports. You know, I've, I've been seeing it on social media where you have, a, you have a divide. You have one section that says, we have to stay home. Let's be smart. Let's just be careful. And then you got the other side who says, no, no, we're go we need to get back. We're not going to be sheep. We're not going to be, you know, ushered here and there. So it's a you, and you know parents are going to be the same way. Um, and I've heard the same kind of thing with the private schools. And, you know, Capital Christian here in Sacramento was for decades a smaller school power. And then they get Casey Taylor, big-time coach at Del Oro, um, who Darren has heard about, and, and Steve and State Bowls. And, um, and they take a big climb. And in the last month, they've laid off like 25 staffers, including this high-profile coach, because – the coronavirus is clobbering that private school where the enrollment has dropped and people are transferring out. And so it is a business and it, and it, uh, for private, you know, we used to always think all oh, the private schools got all these advantages. They might be at the disadvantage now. Um, yeah. if there's people who aren't right. getting back to work and, uh, we don't have as many private school powers here as Steve has in his area and James, you have in your area and Darren, you have in the greater Bay area, but that's going to be a, a real interesting, you know, thing to see what happens. I, I could see, um, you know, one other side note is um, football gate really carries a lot of um, extracurricular on every campus. And if we don't have any fans or anything, the powerhouse football programs, modern day to the WCAL schools in the Bay Area, to all the powerhouses in the Southern California, to the powers in our area, they'll survive. But the city schools, the ones that need every dollar, may they, they may, may, you may be pulling the plug on those. So it's, uh, it's going to be pretty grim, I think, for a lot of people and, and, and that big business and you know, survival and public school, private school. It's going to be, we're going to have stories that we've never told before and not stories that we want to be telling. Darren, yeah. I want to, I want to just ask you because you're, I believe De La Salle is in your coverage zone. Right. I talked you, to Justin you, Allen about two days ago. So, so yeah. I, and this is, I did not write this question on my notepad. What are they telling you at De La Salle? What are they telling me? They're just doing what everybody else is doing. They are sitting back and uh, waiting to see what happens. I mean, they're doing Zoom calls just like this. They're monitoring what uh, their kids are doing at home, uh, but the campus is closed. Uh, you know, Justin Allenbaugh has been working out of his out of his home for a couple of months now. He said he he actually did take a trip to De La Salle just a couple of days ago. Um, they're in finals already. A lot of the private schools here are in finals, so they're they're getting ready to wrap up here in the next couple of days. And uh, you know, then the kids are pretty much on their own. But obviously, the coaches are monitoring them, not just at De La Salle, but I, every other coach I've talked to. I haven't, you know, I, I'm, you know, they might be saying trying to say just the right things or what, but I haven't heard anybody suggest that, you know, we're going to go rogue or anything like that. They're all listening to their districts, listening, you know, in the case of a private school, listening to their athletic directors or, or the administrators at the schools and, you know, doing what they're told. Um, so at this point, you know, they're hopeful, 
But as, as uh, Justin told me a couple of days ago, you know, as long as they have a season, he doesn't care when it is. It could be in the winter, could be in the spring. Uh, he just hopes that they have a season. So, and that's a, you know, that's a feeling that I'm getting from, you know, most coaches I've, I've spoken with. Um, we did a survey, I want to say about two or three weeks ago, maybe a little longer, surveyed uh, all the football coaches in the Bay Area. We got probably 30 to 40% response, which uh, most of them said that they would be surprised. They were, it was like 50, I think the question was, uh, do you anticipate uh, football in the fall? Are you 100% confident, 75% confident, 50% or less? And most were in the 50% or less category. So, Steve Fry, I, Steve Fryer, I want to just go to you real fast. I'm sorry, Darren, but I want to go to Steve Fryer real fast here. Your, your Orange County is home to probably the most competitive football league there is in the nation, which is the Trinity League. What are you hearing? Well, um, those schools are pretty high end, like you say. You know, they're collegiate in a lot of ways. So, they can do Zoom meetings. They're, they're doing workouts. They're, they've got everything set up. They're talking to the kids all the time. They're, they're doing as much as they can. Uh, and not just to train league, but I was talking to Michigan Hill coach Chad Johnson the other day. And uh, they're, they're pedaling hard, too, as far as, like, you know, getting, getting uh, plays out to people, review, using Huddle an awful lot to look at plays last year. You know, how did we do this? How are we going to do this better this year? Things like that. They're still breaking down film like crazy on huddle with all these kids and they all have workout plans and things like that. And kids are sending them coaches back videos. Yeah, here I am doing my lifts. Here I am doing my work and all this stuff like that. Look what I did. And so there's still a lot of that going on, but I think that there's a lot of, you know, Orange County's not all Newport beach guys, you know, it's not all Newport beach. <laughs> but it's That's right. There are a lot of uh, very urbanized uh, uh, areas, uh, Santa Ana, La Habra, Anaheim, Costa Mesa, uh, et cetera. And so there's a lot of places where, these kids don't have access to laptop stuff, huddle and all these things like that. You know, how much are those coaches out there able to really keep their kids sort of corralled and keep them, keep them going and, 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 and train all that stuff. So, you know, there is a lot of haves and have nots here in Orange County, you know, wide disparity. And I think uh, as far as like preparation for football, um, it's going to take, you know, we're going to see a, a, a good disparity in who's prepared. Also football, it's kind of a dangerous sport, guys. And so you need to have, I think, what is it, 14 days you must have to practice uh, before you can play a game. Uh, you know, you're going to have to get all those practices in, too. So that's going to back things up as well. There's, the, this thing is so layered and complicated. Uh, it, it's really, it, it's really uh, a, a new world out there in terms of how, how coaches are attacking this thing and, you know, what can, what, when can things really get started for sure. We have no idea. August 15th, September 15th, who knows? Darren, I want to go to you real fast because there's another issue here, and that's physicals. Uh, you have a lot of doctors that are, that are on the front line. They're working. I've heard various scenarios where I, I had a, a, an administrator tell me yesterday they're thinking about uh, using chiropractors to get physicals in because there's no doctor. There may not be a doctor available. Is that what you – I mean, the physical issues is an, it's got to be a, another serious issue from where you're at. I don't even think we've gotten there yet, but that is a very good point. I mean, as a parent of a, a daughter who's going to be a senior in the fall, I mean, that's one thing we're going to have to do is get her a physical. And I'm not sure how we're going to go about that. Probably, you know, I would guess Kaiser still doing physicals, but uh, you know, that's what we normally do when we get her a physical. Um, that's a that's a darn good question. I mean, I I am not sure how, you know, these hospitals, especially if we have a surge in in the virus. I mean, right now we're kind of like sitting here and we're kind of loosening the restrictions a little bit. But you know, you know, got you know, uh, the first I would say week or two of the shelter in place, I went out in my neighborhood and there was nobody out. I mean you might see one or two cars. And this past weekend, it was maybe not back to normal, but it was pretty close. Uh, most people are still wearing masks and whatnot, but it, uh, uh, it didn't look like it was a ghost town. Um, so as we get, you know, as the restrictions loose, you know, loosen, 
if we see a, a surge in cases, I mean, are, are people going to be eager to go to a doctor or to the hospital or wherever to get their physical? I mean, I had an eye appointment about six weeks ago that I, I put off just because I didn't want to go to Kaiser. I was like, I'm not going, <laughs> I'm not going there if I don't have to. Uh, okay. So uh, that's a good question and, and something I'm sure that uh, we're going to monitor once we get to that point. I mean, at, at this point, I don't think we're, we're quite there yet. Joe Davidson, I have another issue for you. You're an athletic director, and all of a sudden they tell you, okay, we're going to alter the season. Schedules have to be changed. That's a problem. Yes, and, and it's going to be interesting. And, and piggybacking on what uh, Darren and Steve were saying, too, is, um, you know, uh, I think a lot of these athletic directors are already thinking about this. Um, contingency plans, and you're going to have football in the winter, you're going to have it in the spring, you're going to have a, a shortened season. Um, from when I remember talking to coaches and athletic directors and commissioners over the years, they want to, they never want to lose their league games. You want to have a league schedule. So there you lose your non-league games. And if you're, you know, just a, a have not, um, probably doesn't matter. But with some of those powerhouse programs that Darren covers or Steve covers that we cover, those non-league powerhouse intersectional games or your big revenue makers. So that's going to be interesting to see how those uh, are handled. Um, and what about the, um, how do you make it a sell for fans? You know, your fans and these parents are asked to mm -hmm. donate their time and their funds and run the snack bar and, and, and this and have kids and send your kids to our school. What happens when you tell those parents, we can't have people at the games or we're only going to have a quarter of those fans. Um, there's going to be some, there's going to be some pretty bad blood, I would think, at some of those parking lots and just trying to get in. Um, you know, we've heard about maybe the pro sports or college doing games without fans. Um, well, those levels have television contracts. High schools don't have that luxury. And going back to how infectious this disease is and what Steve was saying is, if you think about a, a field turf, and that's what most high schools are using, mm -hmm. what a Petri dish of, of infection and whatever, because those fields are already – you know, disgusting. And how do you sanitize a field turf and all that equipment? Um, and guys to each other every day in practice and in games, um, that's going to be interesting. And, and somebody might ask us, you know, James, you know, well, what's the big deal about football? Why such an emphasis on football? Well, simple. It's the most popular, popular sport in America. It's the, the most um, heavily attended sporting event in terms of fans. Um, so it becomes your biggest revenue maker. And it's the most, um, populated in terms of student athletes across the country, you know, 40 man rosters, 50 man rosters, 60, 70 man rosters. So yeah, it's a big deal. Um, I also think that the high schools will use, let's say back to your thing, James, if you're an athletic director um, and you're relying on health officials and local officials, government officials, the mm -hmm. NFL, we have, you know, some NFL teams here in California mm -hmm. and we know that the NFL training camps and exhibition seasons are, in July and August, right when the high schools get ramped up. Now, if those NFL teams are allowed to proceed as normal, same with the colleges, then the high schools will. But if they have to postpone, then the high schools will do. They'll all follow each other. Remember back when the state basketball, oh my goodness, the state CIF state finals are canceled. That was the same days or the same 72 hours as NC2A saying, you know, the, the, the March Madness is off. And the same days that uh, the NBA said, the season is suspended. So they're all going to fall in line. Uh, you can't have one entity doing it and the other's not. Steve, one of the things that struck me was part of the executive committee um, Zoom call on last week was the financial report that the Southern section put out in which football, after all expenses, made a, a $125,000 profit for the year. Man, you know that is the that is the big gorilla, isn't it? It's it's yeah. It's, you know, football is the is is the, is the money maker. Football is the tail that wags the dog, uh, and that would include also like when when leagues are put together. You know, nobody ever says ah, this is, good. this is a really good swimming league. You know, <laughs> only Dan Albano does, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, Aquadan, Aquadan, as we call him. Yep. King of the chlorine, prince of the pool, duke of the deck, Dan Albano. That's him. But but we but um, uh, you know. Let's say practice, you know, we decide practice is going to start in August, stuff like that. You know, again, you know, are parents going to be comfortable 
with, you know, putting their kids out there on practice fields and putting them in sports, you know, are, I, it's going to be interesting to see parents have a big say still over what their kids do and don't do. So it's going to be pretty fascinating to see how that rolls out. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, spectators and things like that go, you know, how many fans, you know, can you put in there? Do you social distance everybody? There's a, there's a lot of things to think about, you know, snack bar sales are such a huge part of, of your of your in, your income uh, for a high school team, you don't have a lot of that coming in. Uh, you know, pri the smaller private schools that that rely on fundraising to stay open. You know, this business has been like you know somebody who writes us a big check every year. You know, so and so's metal company, so and so's groceries, so and so's restaurants, whatever, and they don't have money right now for advertising for newspapers. Maybe they're not going to have money to to help uh, underwrite football programs, especially all the you know, the Trinity League schools that rely a lot on big time fundraising. You're going to have a golf tournament that raises a lot of money. What if, you know, somebody doesn't have a, you know, he can't underwrite, you know, five, buy five tables at the, uh, the post golf tournament banquet. There is a lot of, lot of questions, a lot of unknowns out there about how this is going to all come together. Darren, one of the issues I'm, I'm, I, I kind of started when, when, the, when everything got started was the effect of the private schools when it comes to enrollment. And with a lot of families on furloughs or they've lost jobs, it's going to be really, really tough for a family to write a check out for tuition off of that uh, stimulus check that they've gotten. Uh, this is a real problem, I would assume, up north, too. It, it will be a problem. Uh, both commissioners uh, that I talked to last week, uh, Dwayne Morgan and Pat Cruchank, said that, you know, that they're, they're monitoring it. Uh, obviously, it's going to come down to, you know, uh, some transfer flexibility if you were to allow a kid to go from a private school to a, a public school, would they be eligible right away? But, I mean, who knows where we're, like, we've been discussing this whole time, who knows where we're going to be in the fall? Who knows where we're even going to be in the winter? I mean, uh, we're looking at what happens if they do allow some fall activity. What if, you know, these football teams do start practicing and, you know, are allowed to practice in late August or September? What happens when you have your, your first positive case, a kid who comes down with it, you know, you know, do you, is their season over? You know, is it going to be the same thing as basketball where we watch uh, Menlo school girls up here in the Bay area where we had watched Archbishop Reardon's boys team just pulled out of the tournament uh, because, you know, they didn't even have a, a positive case. It was, you know, that uh, somebody, you know, at the school had tested positive, nobody on the team. So what's going to happen when you have somebody on a team who tests positive? And, you know, more than likely, that's going to happen until we have a vaccine. So <laughs> it's... And what if that know, school a, doesn't... What if that school doesn't disclose the name or doesn't disclose the information that, hey, we have a player who tested well, positive and, right, and the parents say, a, hey, that's, that's personal information. And, and then it gets kind of sneaky. That's, that's, and then there's speculation and it could be really something. And what if but as a, as a, if you're a, another parent of a kid on that team, you know, let's say, you know, for instance, my kid's water polo team, you know, somebody, we find out somebody tests positive, you're going to want to know what who what you know you know when you know not to uh, mention the opposition right so yeah I, let me I, ask you let me let me ask you this joe i just want to bounce back on the on the on the financial aspects of of this when it comes to the private schools and there's going to be a transfer issue here coming really fast here these kids are going to transfer out we see it coming a lot of these kids are going to transfer out to go to other schools do you think the state office is going to give a one-time exemption for a hardship transfer for a kid that's going to be interesting. I would think that Ron Machetti, the CIF director, will have conversations, if he hasn't already, uh, with his 10 section commissioners to figure that out. Um, you know, um, as we said earlier, I could see a, a blue chip, not even a blue chip guy, a good, a, you know, a good high school player in Sacramento and geez, they're not, they're not returning to normal. And, and the family says, we're going to Modoc County, way up there by the Oregon border. And we're going to go to Alturas High School, enrollment 612. And we're going to, we're going to rent a house there. And we're going to let my kid play football. And um, 
geez, what can, you know, these are transfers that we've never seen before. So they, they, they would have to have some kind of wiggle room because there is no protocol. There's no template for some virus, a pandemic thing. None of us in our lifetime have seen any of this um, stuff. So I think they'll be um, more and, and So you would hope that in the spirit of sportsmanship and the spirit of competition and the spirit of goodwill, there would be wiggle room on some of those things because these would be these would be unlike any transfers that we're used to. These would not be athletically motivated uh, transfers to go get a scholarship or go to play for a big powerhouse. These would be motivated transfers to just get some normalcy and be on a campus and, and be in a uniform. Steve, what do you think? Well, there is, there's a hardship waiver already that's available in the CF7 section blue book, you know, the constitution and bylaws book. Um, as far as like waiving, you know, we're changing what the blue book says, the Southern section commissioner doesn't have that power at all. That has to be done through the regular channels. Count, you know, CF Southern section council, which is made of representatives of all the league, et cetera. They're the ones who can amend, change, delete rules in the, in the blue book. You know, is this something that the council should look at pretty darn soon? You know, we've got a meeting coming up here, you know, or some emergency session maybe change that um, but there is there is a hardship waiver available out there for uh, young people that you know unforeseen circumstances is actually part of the language too in a hardship waiver this is definitely a hard, an unforeseen circumstance Darren what am I missing here buddy what's what's another issue that, that's on your radar that, I'm, that we, we may be missing here oh that's a darn good question uh, well I mean the uh, when we wrote our story last week, the, the big question is, when will it be back? And that's the question that, you know, we've been bouncing around here. When will high school sports be back? And um, everyone wants to know that. I get calls, I get emails. Hey, what, what's your gut feeling? What's your gut feeling? Nobody honestly has a gut feeling at this point. I mean, I just read today, I was showing my daughter uh, that uh, LA County, is uh, going to extend its shelter in place. There was a, a announcement, I guess, last night at a at a council meeting or some kind of meeting. Another three months, and that's taken us into August, right? Well, what I well, yeah. What I understood is that there's a possibility they're going to extend it through July. Now, things obviously can change, numbers can change, things of that sort. So, they're just preparing everybody to say, "Hey, we may be pushing this until the end of July," and that 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 would be a problem. For LA County, like I couldn't believe. <laughs> I mean, you know, you talk about, you know, you mentioned it earlier, coaches going rogue or whatnot. Uh, what's going to happen if they have to shelter in place through the entire summer or two thirds of the summer? What are kids going to do? What are coaches going to do? Um, I mean, we're we're not talking just football. What about basketball and some of the other sports that go on? I mean, you know, uh, the the club season. I know the, the, you know the water polo season with, with my daughter, the junior Olympic season uh, was, was ca uh, canceled or pushed back until December. Um, but, you know, we still have a lot of questions about that as well. But uh, there's just so many unanswered questions that, uh, you know, we, we can talk to these administrators, coaches, you know, parents, athletes, till we're blue in the face. None of them know, you know, we're, we're doing a story on scholarships right now. And, you know, coaches are like, we, you know, we're talking to college coaches all the time. They just don't know. So. Joe, what am I missing here? What's another issue that you, that's on your radar? You know, um, if you think about all these shelter in places in big cities, small cities across the state, since we're in the state, I, I would be worried. And I've talked to some superintendents around here about mental health. Um, you know, teenagers are supposed to be out and about and it's good for their spirit and their soul and, and their learning and their development and their good will. Um, and, you know, for a lot of schools, um, for a lot of kids across the state, um, school is a safe haven. You know, you, you're going to have something to eat. You're going to be around good role models. You're going to have uh, something positive in your life, whereas hell and chaos is at home. And so not to have that um, is a real concern. Um, uh, superintendents are concerned about uh, depression, uh, mental health issues, uh, suicide attempts, um, just trying to cope and just get, get through. 
and we're talking about sports is, is, is something big there, but that, that underlying layer there is big. And what if you're, you know, we've all told these stories of the, the kid from the city school who lives with eight people in his little house and, and, and they, but, but sports allows him to get out or her to get out and get fresh air and expand. They don't have that right now. Um, so that's, that's a big problem there too. And, uh, um, you know, and, and, and we talk about sportsmanship and competition. We're going to have some rogue people. We just know it. We, we have rogue in good conditions. Um, and the other thing is, you know, without a template or a protocol, everybody is challenged right now. Uh, I think we do know that when we do get back to normal, and we will at some point, I think people are going to appreciate every practice, every game, uh, the complaint level will, will drop on on um, you know playoff seedings or everything i think people will just take a game you know we'll take a game we'll do it anywhere and and let's let, let's just get going steve i had a principal tell me last week off the you know on a, he didn't want to be quoted but he was telling me we got to get these kids out here that's our biggest my biggest concern yeah. You know. yeah but you know everybody's acting you know like it's it's a tough situation it's pretty and everybody's not tired of being cooped up and all that but it's not like this is like Anne frank you know, Anne Frank, you know, Anne Frank, I've been to her, I've been to her place in Amsterdam where she was. That was pretty bad. We've got, it's not, it's not as bad as Anne Frank, everybody. You can still get outside and go do things. And people are walking around. You yeah, wear a mask or whatever, but you know, people aren't that confined. As far as what happens with high school sports, I think what's going to happen when it first happens and everybody gets out there that first game and all that stuff, it's going to be like that bottle of champagne or soda or something like that. You shake it up, you let it go, man. It's going to effervesce and people are going to have a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. But in Orange County, in two more weeks after that, people start complaining as usual, right? You know? <laughs> They'll be back. I can't wait to complain again. Complain about the coaches, complain about the coverage, and everything will be back to normal. OC will be just as crazy as it always is in terms of high school sports. Everybody will be nuts again and forget about, you know, how much they appreciated things and, It'll, it'll get nutty again, but, you know, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, we're going to have, we're going to have sports again. When? I don't know, but it's going to happen. When it does happen, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the young people who've missed all their, their spring senior year, you know, I feel really bad for those people, but I think in a lot of ways, it's going to make them better. It's going to make them tougher. It's going to make them more appreciative of things. My folks are, are grew up in the great depression and during world war two. And, you know, and from 1940s onward, I always remember my folks and how much they appreciated all the little things like that. Hopefully we can retain some of that in us and be as close to that, the greatest generation uh, as we can. Actually, in some ways, I think we're as far from the greatest generation from what I've seen the last couple of weeks, we're about as far from those people as we've ever been. But uh, I think we, we, we need to appreciate everything and uh, we get back to it, man. It's going to be, it's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to getting out there and hanging out with Eric Sondheimer and covering games and, uh, and my friend Dan Albano and everybody, I, I, you know, and seeing you at places, James, and yep. I, I want this, I want to, I want to see kids get out there and play and have fun and, and, uh, and making those memories, you know, I basically what, what you and I, what we all do for a living, we fill scrapbooks for a living. It's not much more complicated than that. I want to get back to filling scrapbooks and some of the great things our young people are doing. Let's get going guys. Yeah, we, we chronicle we chronicle teams, and towns, and coaches, and eras, and it's a it's a great responsibility. We all we're all mutual now. We 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 dig it, and and Steve's right. It will come back. The hardest part is just the patience part. It's you know we're 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 social creatures. Human beings are, and and we're you know the patience is the hardest. None of us like even sitting in traffic. I think we're all ready to have traffic again. Well, some <laughs> oh, of us. Are no worries. In, 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 in California, the average speed on the freeway is now like 80 because there's no cars out there. People have been pent up, you know, been sitting in traffic for the last 80 years. They're just going out and they're just driving like maniacs, man. It's like it's like Mad Max on on methadrine out there. The way people are driving, it is crazy. This I has been the I will I will say this. This has been the best 40 minutes I've had in the past three months of two months, and I and I cannot thank the guys here on the opposite on the other side of the screen joe davidson of the sacramento b darren sabedra of the san jose mercury news and steve fryer of the orange county register guys uh i told this to ron the city when i did my video with him uh, a couple weeks ago i hope at the end of the year i love that book by the way can you believe that um, i love it too you know hey, maybe hey, this is something we can do picture.
their 50th anniversary party. That's correct. Uh, maybe, you know, one of the things I hope we can get out of this is maybe every year we can all come together and do something like this at the end of the year and just talk about the year in high school sports and, and everything because I think there are, you know, the perspectives you guys bring are, is just, is absolutely phenomenal. And um, I wish you all the, the, the very best. The, stay safe. C just continue to write and do what you do. Uh, and I thank you for your time. All right, Thank James. you. Thank you. We thank Joe Davidson, Darren Saavedra, and Steve Fryer for joining us this week. Next week, a football coaches roundtable. Until then, thank you and stay safe.